Welcome back to this video podcast edition of 12 Days in March. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this installment, we review the key features of surfactant that you need to know for the USMLE Step 1 exam. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available at the 12 Days website. All right, so here are the must-knows about surfactant. And it looks long, but each of these just will take a second. So I wanted to look up, this is about the law of Laplace. We need Laplace's law. And so you put in Laplace. This picture comes up for everybody. You can look up anybody. You look up Alexander Hamilton, it's the same picture. They all have the same picture. So I don't know if that's really Laplace, but this is my own signed version of this I have hanging in my living room, so I think it is. All right, so you need to know about the law. Surfactant facts. So we know that it's this phosphatidylcholine, basically, this phospholipid uh, that's synthesized by the pneumocytes, and it's a reflection of maturity by week 35 gestation. Here you have, like, enough surfactant. The lungs will work out okay. Before week 34, the lungs are still a little immature. We're not making enough surfactant. And talk about this two-to-one ratio. What's going on here is the sphingomyelin is made already. It's also it's all synthesized there. This stays stable. The real issue is just the surfactant is going up. That's why they talk about the two to one ratio. This is stable. This is good. We're there already. This is like coming for the home stretch because we know we're going to come out and have to start breathing. So it's time to think about expanding those alveoli. If you're born immature, you need to know what increases surfactant production uh, or release steroids. These patients get steroids. Occasionally, they might have a electron micrograph in the setting of a surfactant question, they're not going to just give you this and say, what is it? But I like the idea, lamellar body, organelles containing parallel stacks that unravel. This is surfactant. It like unravels, which is great. It's like putting down new rugs in the alveoli. And the production, steroid, you know, stress steroids, so corticosteroid, thyroxin. Surfactant decreased with insulin, so diabetic mothers have a higher incidence of infants born with respiratory distress. And how does it work? It decreases surface tension of the alveoli. That's the mechanism by which it works, but what does that mean? This is a classic question for them to test your understanding of surfactant and collapsing pressures. Illustrated are two spheres, A the larger, B the smaller. Interposed is a stopcock. If you open that valve, which sphere is more apt to collapse, the larger or smaller? Well, based on the law of Laplace, the sphere with the smaller radius will be confronted with the greater collapsing pressure. So the answer to this question is B. The tiny alveolus faces disproportionately high collapsing pressures, and this would be their permanent fate were it not for surfactant, which renders the surface tension, expressed in the numerator, to a lower value, thereby reducing the collapsing pressure going to collapse unless we can do something about surface tension, and that's what surfactant is about. Surface area of surfactant in the uh, little alveoli. A little alveoli, you put one of those lamellar things in, you unroll that rug, that's the same 10 by 12 rug, covers a lot of surface area. This is a big, big living room over here. It doesn't get as much surfactant. So this is really important in terms of maintaining the uh, patency of alveoli. Like surface tension, where's surface tension coming from? These go, and this is again, they don't test you on it, it's just for me, I have to understand stuff. So surface tension is these cohesive interactions between molecules, that's like chemistry, right? So look at this, it's a beautiful animated drawing. These little things are in there, that's surfactant. Hydrophobic and a hydrophilic end to it. So this is surfactant, he comes swimming in there and he bangs right in there and breaks up those adhesive forces. That's the surface tension. So you've got to decrease those surface tension. That, that's what the surfactant does. And so where surfactant doesn't work besides in ARDS, hyaline membrane disease, the other thing where it comes up is this issue of atelectasis. So I want to get atelectasis on the brain. Atel, incomplete, ectasis, extension, incomplete extension. So there's micro and macro atelectasis. We'll do macro atelectasis before this section is done. That's where a whole section of the lung collapse. The classic example is the post-op patient not breathing well. Their lower segments, the alveoli, collapse. So we get micro atelectasis. The whole point of surfactant are to keep those alveoli. And that's it. And just to summarize the take-homes, please be familiar with the following. The type 2 pneumocyte secretes surfactant. The composition is essentially phosphatidylcholine. Following the law of Laplace, the collapsing pressure, P, is reduced if you can decrease the surface tension, T, and this particularly benefits the alveoli with their tiny radius. The key diseases where this will be mentioned include respiratory distress syndrome of the newborn and atelectasis.
Be familiar with the key measure of lung maturity, that being the lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio. At 2 to 1, lecithin, or phospholipid, exceeds the fixed amount of sphingomyelin. And finally, be familiar with the tricks to increase prenatal levels of surfactant, that being glucocorticoid use. And that concludes this discussion of surfactant for the USMLE Step 1. If you have any questions or concerns, which you shouldn't, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.